Welcome to Gather Geeks, a podcast by BizBash, the place where people passionate about meetings and events come together. This episode is a Gather Geeks special sponsor edition. Here's your host, BizBash CEO, David Adler. Today we are live on tape to interview David Kenyon, the Senior Vice President of Leo Events. Today, he is in the middle of producing Walmart's summer holiday event in Denver for over 6,000 store managers worldwide to showcase the new season. He is the glue that drives a 20-person production team with a budget of millions of dollars. In fact, David is the lead on the Walmart account, the world's largest retailer who believes in face-to-face events as part of its core DNA. This podcast as a companion piece to an in-depth interview with VP Event Solutions for Walmart, Mark Hanneberger. See the show notes for more details. In fact, both of these podcasts point out how David and his team represent the model of the perfect relationship between agency and client. Walmart takes their events seriously and works with Leo on their three biggest signature events, including their iconic Associates shareholder event in Bentonville, Arkansas, as well as the holiday team event that we are experiencing today. So before we begin, let me give you a little background. Leo Events is the definition of the next generation of event management and experience marketing agency. It combines business-to-business meetings and event efficiency with business-to-consumer creativity that helped the six-year-old Tennessee-based organization with 50 full-time employees grow almost 600% and produce over 300 events annually for some of the most iconic brands in the world, including Walmart, ExxonMobil, Sherwin-Williams, Hilton Garden Inn, AutoZone, and Software AG. Built as a merger of two legacy firms, Leo Events is rooted in a heritage of what they call Southern Soul, with offices in Memphis, Chattanooga, and Nashville. They excel at the rare combination of logistics and production, as well as the aspects of creative content and brand development. They are in the cutting edge of face-to-face gatherings with their festival division that produces regional events like the Double Decker Arts Festival in Oxford, Mississippi, and goes all the way to national brands like Kabu, a mixperience, yes, that's right, a mixperience that is held in Del Mar, California each September and is expanding in 2019 to the Cayman Islands in Arlington, Texas. Leo's three principals, husband and wife team Cindy and Kevin Brewer, and partner Kent Underwood, and their senior leadership team encourage employees to think like a startup, seeking out and pioneering best industry practices and innovations, and pushing for the best solutions no matter the obstacle or the client size. So without further ado, let's listen to my fascinating interview with David Kenyon, the Senior Vice President of Leo Events. Okay, so we're here with David. Um, Leo Events... First of all, it's an interesting name. Uh, tell us a little bit about Leo Events and how it is kind of the prototype model for the modern event company. Sure. So I think Leo Events uh, kind of has a unique history and unique birth. And that is we came from the principles of the company and the leadership in the company came from uh, an operations based background. Um, you know, we're people that came from the technical side, and the operation side and the content development side. Uh, that's how we originated. So we then folded in great creative on top of that, where a lot of our competition started with great creative and tries to fold uh, operational excellence into that. We we're our foundation is operational excellence. Well, you know, it's interesting that you say that because I hear that some of these bigger agencies that come from that really fall down on the facilitation and the and the operations on a day-to-day basis because they don't really realize the realities of some of the things that happen. The best creative doesn't work if you can't execute it effectively. Yeah. And you can see that if you're coming from the operational side. Absolutely. Because you Absolutely. can see, oh my God, the, you, the eye rolling, I guess, when you... Sure. So, you know, <laughs> the biggest challenge we have is is that melding of, of creative and, and operations and getting a team, getting creative directors that understand the operational part and the operations people that understand how to how to give the leash to the creative team and, and is, that's what makes an, an effect. Okay, so thing. okay, so you're the one that pulls the leash when it gets a little out of hand, right? Sure. At some so point, how do you do? What is what is what is where do you where do you like the eyes roll on that side? Sure. You know, you you want the creative people to to not feel 
um, like they have a leash. We want them to take it to the extreme. And the operational people, the ones of us who have to bring it in into reality, we pull them just, uh, just from the edge of the cliff. Uh, we, we don't want to pull them too early because that's when the great creative happens. And so when you're in a brainstorming meeting with the creatives, what does that look like at, at Leo? You know, at Leo, the, the brainstorming meetings include everybody. They're not just creative. The account folks, the strategy folks, the, the digital folks, the production folks. We include the technical team, the technical directors in those brainstorming meetings. We'll pull in production coordinators and production assistants just because the more ideas and the more thoughts that you can get up on that whiteboard or, or into those notes, uh, the, the, the more fun, the more effective of a program you're going to How create. generational is that? Is the, is that or does it matter anymore? Is it is sure? It? I, no, I think it's generational a little bit. I, I think you know what the millennial team, which is a huge part of our company, brings to the table is is a way of looking at things through the eyes of social media and and through digital activations that maybe some of us that didn't grow up in that generation or or, or with that type of digital part of our day to day lives still don't quite see it the way they see it. Do you have any examples of some of those ideas that came from? These kind of brainstormers that were the were, were not the typical people that you would expect them to come from. Mm -hmm. Like, is there are there any examples of like some really incredible idea by that person that was not have, that you would never expect it from? You know, I, I think what the young young kids bring is they bring because they're not jaded and they bring a bit of innocence um, that their ideas can sometimes be so far out there that it makes us think out of the box, which sometimes those of us have been doing this for decades, we get stuck in a box a little bit and we have trouble thinking outside. So, you know, a 22-year-old production coordinator can come with a great idea because they understand how to utilize social media way better than I ever right, could. Right. Go back a little bit. I mean, we talked about how how Leo is like a combination of a DMC mentality, uh, mentality event production content creation and learning and development, which I think is the whole newest thing that's really popular that used to be kind of the boring side, but is on fire and the festivalization side. You actually, your company actually has fingers in all those pies. We do. One of the biggest, I think, things that, that sets Leo apart from a lot of the competition is, is our initiative in the festival world, is our public events side. And that, Tell us about that. That's really interesting. So that part of the business is ran by one of the principals, Kent Underwood, and we do one of the biggest, most high-end music festivals in the country called Kaboo, which happens every September in Del Mar. Um, and what that gives us the chance to do, it gives us the chance to try out new techniques and new technology with, with crowds on a proving ground that's not in a contained corporate atmosphere. So we're allowed to, or we're given the opportunity to try out Bluetooth initiatives, RFID tracking initiatives, some really kind of fun interactive things in a festival environment. And if we can prove their worthiness or effectiveness with 50 or 60,000 people, it gives us uh, the roadmap to how to bring that into the corporate world. So that's like your lab. It is our lab. It absolutely is. And and so any really cool new things that you've learned in the last year? You know, for us, the the biggie has been how to utilize uh, Bluetooth tracking and Bluetooth. Uh, <laughs> so the biggie in the past has, has been how to utilize Bluetooth tracking and 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 understanding people's movements and using those Bluetooth devices, which are in every one of our phones, um, how to create a personalized experience using that. So we collect data on the folks at the festival, and we know that they, more than anything, they visited the art installations. So we're going to start sending so them. So you saw that, and so you're changing your design? And it would, which is no different than Google tracking does it in, in your website. If you were looking at furniture, all of a sudden on Facebook, you're going to see ads for furniture. We're using some of that same technology um, on, on the individual Bluetooth identifier to individualize the festival experience. And if we can bring that into the corporate, individualize your corporate experience so it's tailored to your needs and your wants, your desires, it makes that much more of an effective experience for you. Are you seeing the festivalization of corporate events? Or is that not there yet? Or will it be there? Is it, or is it, is it just a different animal? I think it is there and it's there in, in the more public attended corporate events, i.e. Salesforce or Dreamforce. Right. Um, it, it, I think it's less so in the in invitation only uh, corporate events, which is probably heavier on what Leo does. But yeah, I think you'll see that a lot in the CES and in the, in, in the large. But, but don't, mm -hmm. let me challenge you a little bit on that. 
don't you think people are people and that if they see it at Dreamforce or a CES, they're going to want it at the corporate events in some form? They're expecting it. I, I think more and more so what people are expecting. They are expecting an individualized experience. Yeah. And, and they expect, you know, the one one roadmap doesn't work for everybody. Right. And, and they get that because everything that they see on their mobile device is customized for them. Right. So the apps nowadays, apps five years ago, were nothing but a schedule and a contact list. And they're much more of an individualized experience. For some of our clients, we take the learnings that we know the attendees need and we create on the exhibit floor a customized um, uh, experience for them to go from booth to booth. We tell them in what order they need to visit what booths based on the needs of, of their individual. So are you saying that things like heat mapping and things like that are the toolbox for event organizing, no matter what, at this Absolutely. point. Absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> those tools give us the analytics to understand how we create that individualized experience. Right, right. And it's not the kind of data that you're, I mean, it's kind of like the way they're programming these things now. You you can see it pretty quickly, graphically, as opposed to as opposed to like give it to the geek absolutely. that's going to go like crunch the numbers. And no, then absolutely. Later, you know. it's all instantaneous. Yeah, yeah. It's, so you know. It is, and 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 that's you know I think part of the challenge of our events as a whole is is. People no longer have the patience to wait to to get the feedback of, of or the 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 ROI from their experience. They expect it instantaneously. They expect when they walk out of a, a general session or an exhibit floor that the tools they need or they don't want to wait till they get back home and log into their computer oh and download. They want them right away on their phone, or on, the, on their iPad, on their mobile device. Right. Well, I, I, I would say that like I. I try to say that I'm millennial minded. I think everyone is now becoming millennial minded, waiting on lines, in, non instantaneous results, things like that. It's it's the way of the past. Absolutely, That's absolutely. Key. Okay, so we're here at a Walmart event, and uh, you guys are doing. I mean, Walmart's the world's largest retailer. Absolutely, you're doing many of their events for them. It's pretty incredible how they are using events more effectively than ever to get their messages across. I believe that like the ultimate of influencer marketing are getting your best people and making them advocates for your company. Absolutely. How do you do that? You know, I, we, we, we give Walmart credit because as a company, they see the value in these live events. At least twice a year, they still bring every single manager together to, to have a meeting, to talk about the year, to talk about the season. And, and that is becoming, uh, more the anomaly than the, than the, than the usual. So we're lucky that we have a client. What do you that mean? Say that to, again. You think that people are, are, you think that's going to, Sure. Should it be the norm? It should be the norm because as wonderful as digital is, it, there's nothing that replaces the face to face to sit, okay. to sit 10 feet from the CEO of your company and listen to him speak to you is completely different than listening to his podcast yeah. or uh, the message he sends out in a letter or whatever digital activation they're trying to utilize to replace that. Um, yeah, the, the personal experience, but it's still expensive. It's and it, it is. It, I think difficult to justify the ROI, but I think if you dig into it, you get a much better ROI from that face to face, from that in-person meeting, from that networking that happens with, you know, of our 6,000 store managers and associates here, the interaction that happens from associate to associate, that exchange of ideas, you don't get that in a virtual reality experience or in, in any type of online experience. Well, that's what I kind of think it's like, if it's, influencer marketing on steroids because Absolutely. they're the influencers that you really care about. Absolutely. You don't care about the social media as much as you care about those people who are the people that are making the heart of your company. Absolutely. Those 6,000 people are going to take these initiatives and, 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 and these ideas and this enthusiasm back to the other million associates who are going to take it back to their tens of millions of customers. Okay. So on the flip side of that, Getting their attention for this period of time is very important. Absolutely. And if you don't do it correctly, it could have the boomerang effect. Absolutely. Where they Absolutely. do the eye rolling and they go back at those corporate guys. Well, how do you how do you make it so that it's such a valuable experience? Sure. So I, I think the live experience, and, and this is nothing new, but what we don't want to do is listen to three hours of talking heads. You have to make it an immersive 
interactive and fun experience. Okay. So those are buzzwords. Absolutely. How do you bring those buzzwords to life as Leo events? Well, so the immersive experience to me is the integration of the digital and the social media and connecting all that to what's happening, not just in that general session, but is that connecting that then to their exhibit floor and then to their individual breakouts and, and creating that cohesive experience where they're getting the same message and the personalized experience through all three of those events uh, or, or those those three pieces of that pie. I think it, that's the definition of an immersive experience. So I keep going back. Every time I do a podcast or talk to anyone, I'm back to the Maya Angelou quote. I've learned that people will forget what you said, but not what, but will, but will never forget how you made them feel. We're going to talk a lot about that. And how does that actually become part of your DNA? Absolutely. Absolutely. How you make people feel is everything. Yeah. Our job is, is to create a feeling in, a, in an environment and, uh, uh, and, and an experience for people. Right. So how you feel is, right. is everything. Okay, David, let's talk about um, David's rules. Okay. In terms right. of, in terms of uh, like, I'm going to say a word. All and right. then what comes to mind, like this is as you walk around with your team and I say the word lighting, what, what, what is the first thing that comes to mind when I, when I mention that? Don't have too much of it. And in what way? What does that mean? You know, having technology for the sake of technology, whether that's the quantity or the type, doesn't do anybody any good. Any type of technology or the amount of lighting you have or the amount of video you have, it has to be there for a purpose. Having technology for the sake of technology doesn't do you right. any good. So what's the purpose of great lighting? To create an environment that reflects the creative messaging you're trying to deliver. And lighting is one of the enhancement tools. Lighting is never the focus of what we do. Lighting simply brings the environment to life. Uh, music. Music, I think, is probably one of the most underutilized elements in our industry. Why? Um, because music is the one-on-one -on -one experience. It's the same thing we talk about of why we want to do live meetings. We want live meetings to have the human to human interaction. And I think the band brings a human to human entertainment. It's so much better than having uh, background music or the sound guy play his mixtape. Having the enthusiasm of a great band can is it the just drive is the, the energy is it the, of the room. Is it, is it what the live music does to your brain? No, I think it's what the live musicians do to your brain. Mus oh, musicians. I, I, I don't oh, think it's about the music point. being played. I think it's about the musicians are making a connection. That's so to interesting. The I've never thought Making of a it connection to our audience is what we're all about here. And I think the bands make just as much a connection as the speakers do. So when I say the word speaker or speech, what is your David's rules? David's rule for a speech. That's a good question. Um, don't over script it. Talk to your audience. Talk with your audience. Don't talk at your audience. And how do you do that if you're not you, – you deal with a lot of corporate guys. Do how, do you, how do you get those guys – first of all, they're probably scared to death in many Some of cases, them are, sure. Some of them. But how do, you get them, how do you get them to feel that way? How do you get them to feel comfortable enough to be that – talk to the audience and not at the audience? So I, I think our corporate executives that do the best job are the people that – understand and know the message they're trying to deliver and the ones that have a conversation with their audiences as opposed to just reading that teleprompter. Those are the successful ones. Um, getting people comfortable in their environment, comfortable on the stage, that's easy for us. Rehearsal takes care of that. But people that have the conversation as opposed to just reading down that teleprompter, those are our successful executives. How about the word likability? How do you how do you project likability if you're a speaker? You can't fake it. Okay. I, I, Are people just likable and not likable? Absolutely. I think <laughs> it, I, I I think people know right away if you want to be on that stage or you don't want to be on that stage. And I think that's what creates your likability. If I'm an executive who wants to be on that stage, who wants to have a conversation, I think people know that instantaneously. I, I and I don't think that's something you can teach. Can you uh can you edit out a speaker, especially if he's the CEO of the company? <laughs> <laughs> no, you can't. And, and I think a lot of companies struggle with that. Um, I think likability is a key element in any leader. If people don't like you, they're generally not going to respect you. And, that, and events are kind of a, a sort of a, a, a 
uh, a way to see that easier than anything else. Absolutely. You know, being on stage is you're exposing who you really are. And the biggest of executives from when Steve Jobs used to do this to, um, to Doug McMillan with Walmart or, um, or, or, or the head of any other company is, uh, people, people know you, you are much more human when you're standing on that stage, 10 feet from your employees or your staff. So we got to figure out how Harvard can uh, create MBA courses on likability of their CEO, of people that want to be eventually CEOs and rulers of the world. Absolutely. Um, how about, uh, how about um, the guest experience when I say that? You know, the guest experience has to, rem- has to be fun. I think we forget sometimes that, that people, they need to have fun and they need to enjoy themselves that you're never going to learn anything if you don't want to be there. And I think creating a, a, a fun, um, just fun. And we can use all of our buzzwords of immersive and interactive, but it's got to be enjoyable and fun or you're not going to learn. How about, um, when you see graphics at a show, what is it? Is our David rule on graphic too many words? Yeah. yeah. Graphics on a show. I think people fall into a trap of, of trying to condense their speech and put it into PowerPoint. Um, people think that PowerPoint can replace their speech and it doesn't PowerPoint is so overused. Sometimes PowerPoint or any type of graphics should be used to enhance the speech, not replace it. Uh, if people are watching the power the, the, the screens and not the speaker, then you're, you're backwards. Storytelling. Tell lots of stories. People love to, um, attendees. They want to hear, they want to hear the, about the experience. They want to hear a good story. Everybody loves a good book. So creating part of the experience is creating a story from the moment you walk in and wrapping it all together at the very end. And how about, uh, how, when is a story too, when is a tale too long? Like, like you can tell stories, but are we now in, in a, in an era that short storytelling has to be shortened? Sure. Well, we're, we're in an era of instantaneous information. I no longer have to read an entire newspaper to understand what's going on in the world. I can get focused alerts to my phone. So getting right to the point, uh, I, I think is important. I think part of what the digital world has done to the next generation has shortened our attention span because we're capable of taking a lot more information in, in a lot shorter period of time. So picture is worth a thousand words. Pictures are worth 10,000 words. 10,000 words. Uh, if I had my way, um, you would never see words on any graphics on the screen. You would see pictures, um, the occasional graph to, to illustrate a purpose is great, but to put bullet points up on the screen that are just a condensed version of what I just got done telling you is redundant. Do, do people hear things or see things? What is the most important sense when you're at an event? Yes. What? All of them. All of them. You, you, but like you, you're saying pictures and words. So like I think it's so, reading, but it's seeing. And it's, the, I, I, I think it's the temperature. I think it's how you feel. I think it's, I think it's how the room smells. I think all of those senses come into. What are you doing play. with scent? Is scent becoming more important than ever? Not more important than like, ever, but it's, it is. What do you want it to smell like? It's out there. Sure. Like it, I go to hotels now and it's like, absolutely. you can't even walk in without. There's a fragrance scent that's a there, signature. There's great companies out there. I mean, they, they use it on, on, uh, on the ride at Disney to create, you know, and, and again, that fingers in quotes, immersive environment. Sure. Yeah. We, we now have the ability to, to create whatever type of scent we want. If that's, if you want to use that sense too. Sure. The morphing of the industry. What is your rule on that? I mean, how do you borrow one thing from the other? I mean, is it, is it everything seems to be all different? You know, and the same. I, I, I think you're right. It, it is the same. It, I think you, we're, we're building on it. I think the industry becomes deeper. I don't think it changes. It evolves. Everything evolves. Um, but I think it becomes deeper and it has more facets to it. Digital isn't replacing anything. It's giving us another branch, another avenue. Um, everything just gives us a, a different way to reach our target audience. Okay, so I'm going to end on um, the crystal ball. You're going to come back. We're Rip Van Winkle. We're back in 10 years. What are you going to see? I 10 years is not that long. 10 years is not that long. Um, and as you correctly pointed out, we've only had iPhones for 11 years. So if we all can look back at the industry 10 years ago, it was a completely different industry. In 10 years, I think 
what, what we're going to be able to do is, is it, the personal experience will be enhanced. I'm now going to know more about how you feel, how you're reacting on a minute to minute basis, not in the post show survey or not in the, uh, uh, the, the analytics where I'm asking you a question on your phone, but I'm going to know minute to minute how you feel about what's going on on that stage. And I'm going to be able to combine the analytics from all 5,000 of you in the audience to create um, a kind of more of a choose your own adventure. If we remember those books as kids, you can choose your own adventure. We're going to have the analytics for, to, to create an experience where the, we we're, we're able to change on a dime and instant, adjust to the audience. Instant analytics. Yeah. We're, we're going to know when, when the audience is happy or sad or bored or enthused and not looking at their distractions. Absolutely. Well, now that we have this on tape in 10 years, <laughs> Talk, we'll be back. We're going to come years. back in 10 years <laughs> to see whether we were right or Absolutely. wrong. So Absolutely. thank you so much, David. Thanks, David. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to today's episode. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. We can be found on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Player FM, Google Play, and Pocket Cast. Be sure to leave us a rating and review. It helps others discover the Gather Geeks podcast. We'd also love to hear from you. You can leave feedback on Twitter at Gather Geeks or leave us an email, gathergeeks at bizbash.com. We hope you join us again for the next episode of Gather Geeks. Until then, gather on. Planning an event and wondering how to ensure your attendees will have the best experience possible? Let Leo Events, an award-winning global events agency, help you create a spectacular meeting or event that will leave your guests cheering and wishing for more. When you're ready to follow the roar everyone is talking about, go to leoevents.com. That's leoevents.com. Thank you.